George R. R. Martin. He of course wrote the A Song of Ice and Fire series, or he's still writing it, I'm not sure. I've seen a few interviews with him, it seems like an interesting guy, and he's definitely got some interesting takes when it comes to writing advice. So, here's 10 of his top tips for writers. Number one, the most important thing for any aspiring writer, I think, is to read. And not just the sort of thing you're trying to write, read everything. That's a good one. I think it's important to read if you're trying to write. It definitely is for me. Reading is what helps me come up with new ideas for stuff I want to write and keeps me engaged with the creative side of my brain, I suppose. But I especially like what he said about reading everything, not just the genre that you're trying to write. I think there's something to be learned from all manner of stories, all shapes and sizes. There's something you can take away from every single story you read, so I definitely agree with that. If you read widely, then you've got a lot more opportunity to steal stuff from a lot more places. It's important to spend a lot of time writing though, as well as reading, but you can't just read, you've got to balance the two. Balance how you consume and how you create, and then you'll find the sweet spot of productivity, I think. It's just science. It's not science. Number two, one of the big things that distinguishes the strongest fiction from writing that's perhaps without depth is a real understanding of what real human beings are like. Yes, definitely. That kind of advice is right up my street. I say it in my videos all the time, but stories are about people. You can have the grandest settings and the most intricate plots, but if your characters are made out of cardboard, no one's going to care about them and your story isn't going to speak to readers. If you've ever read any of the books in the Song of Ice and Fire series or to an extent watched Game of Thrones, then you'll be able to see how George R. R. Martin practices what he preaches here, I think. Every character seems to have a story of their own, even if we only see a small window into that story. It just makes them seem way more real. Number three, write every day, even if it's only a page or two. I was going to disagree eventually, so here it is. While there's definite benefits to writing regularly and staying engaged with writing, I don't think there's anything wrong on those days where you just can't get going and you just feel frustrated by your writing. I don't think there's anything wrong with just skipping those days. Forcing yourself to write every day feels kind of arbitrary to me and whenever I've done it, it's led me to read back what I'd written and think, well, at least it's done. And personally, I don't want to write stories like that because they always turn out really sh Number four, don't write in my universe, or Tolkien's, or the Marvel universe, or the Star Trek universe, or any other borrowed background. I'll have to risk the wrath of the fanfiction community on this one, but I agree with this. I do think it's better to stretch yourself to invent characters and worlds of your own rather than borrowing them from other authors. If I was going to use an analogy, which I am, and an obvious one at that, I'd say it's like riding a bike with stabilizers or training wheels on. You're never going to fall off and scrape your face along the floor, but you're also never going to learn how to properly balance. I think falling on your face is a huge part of learning to write. Unless it's just me. Number five, I would suggest that any aspiring writer begin with short stories. He also says something here about how he meets new writers that have never written a thing and they're already planning a nine novel series. And he compares that to the Mount Everest of writing which I'm inclined to agree with. It may not surprise you, but I 100% agree with this advice as well. I've got nothing against writers starting out with novels, but for me, short fiction is the absolute best kind of writing to start with. And that's not because of plotting or character building or description or any of that stuff. It's just because short fiction gives you an opportunity to write an entire story from beginning to end. You build experience with every part of the story. Finishing things I think is important as a learning exercise, but also as a motivator to new writers. And I think it's invaluable. Number six, I hate outlines. I have a broad sense of where the story's going. I know the end, but I don't necessarily know each twist and turn along the way. Yep, me too. I struggle to outline and I find it really doesn't help me at all. However, this one I just think comes down to whatever helps you wrestle your story into some semblance of order. I personally really like just having a vague idea of where the story's going. I always know the end, but everything leading up to that is subject to change. I like having the capacity to surprise myself. However, in real life, I hate that approach to pretty much everything. So can't really work that one out. Number seven, I don't write the chapters in the order that you read them. Hmm. Writing out of order like that is not something that's ever occurred to me to try. I can see the potential benefits though. Say you're stuck in one character's perspective and it's not going anywhere you can just switch to another further down the line and keep up your momentum. That makes sense. I might try this next time I start a novel and get bored halfway through. I am writing a story backwards at the moment though, which is in some way similar. Video about it up there. Number eight, all fiction, if it's successful, is going to appeal to the emotions. 
I definitely agree with this one too. Much like the second tip, stories being about people, you've got to know how those people feel. The best kind of writing, in my opinion, is the stuff that stays with you and is more than just there to entertain you in the moment. Writing just to entertain, of course, does still appeal to the emotions though. You don't have to feel moved by a story, you can feel excited or frightened or comfy. It's all emotions. Number nine, I think ultimately the battle between good and evil is weighed within the individual human heart. Seems true to me, this is a stuff of origin stories and villains you can empathise with and protagonists that you can't, stories about flawed people that don't know who they are. Sounds a lot more interesting to me than pure good and pure evil having a bit of a fight. That fight, to some extent, should be within every character in the book. They should all have elements of light and dark. That's what creates those kinds of stories that, while you're reading, makes you think about who you're empathising with and why that might be. It makes you think of the good and evil inside yourself. Number 10, be ready to accept rejection. You can work on a book for two years and get it published and it's like you may as well have thrown it down a well. This seems like good advice as well. Rejection's just one of those things you have to build up a resistance to. The first few times it happens, it can really knock your confidence, but once you get used to it, you find rejections hurt less and less. That's certainly how it's been for me anyway, and now I get so many rejections back and none of them hurt at all. I might not be doing this right. The point is, feeling discouraged about getting rejections is totally normal, but as long as it doesn't stop you writing or stop you sending out another piece of work, then you're fine. Here's a bonus tip from George R.R. R. Martin too. Writing's like sausage making in my view. You'll all be happier in the end if you just eat the final product without knowing what's gone into it. What do you make of that? Let me know in the comments. Head to my website if you want to know more about my writing and my other stuff. Thanks so much for watching, as always, and happy writing.